Welcome to the CFA Level 1 presentation on Financial Statement Analysis. Note that this lecture is part of the Corporate Finance uh, series and most of the material that you'll see here is material that should be familiar because we have already covered this under Financial Reporting and Analysis. So the first point that we'll review is uh, the DuPont formula. Uh, as a side remark, this is explained in detail in the curriculum and uh, in Schweizer, for example, this is not even mentioned in this reading. Um, so I think to be safe, let's just go over it anyway because it's in the curriculum. Now you've seen this before, uh, return on equity is net income divided by equity. So this would be the net income for a given year divided by either the average equity or beginning of year equity. And the whole point of the DuPont equation is to look at this return on equity number. So let's say that for a given company in 2010, this is 20%. And the whole point of the DuPont analysis is to figure out where this uh, return on equity is coming from. So 20% sounds good. But is this because the company is efficient or is it because the company has take, taken on a lot of leverage thereby reducing equity and making the return on equity look good? The DuPont formula can be expressed in three different ways. The most simple form is to express net income over equity as return on assets multiplied by financial leverage. Return on assets is net income divided by total assets and financial leverage is assets divided by equity. So notice that the assets cancel out and we are left with net income over equity. So what this first form is showing us is that we might have a high return on equity because the leverage is high and we need to decompose this ratio into these two uh, decompose return on equity into these two to determine whether the high return on equity is coming because the company is uh, efficient in other words generating high net income on over assets or is it generating a high roe because of high leverage now the return on assets can be further decomposed into the net profit margin times total asset turnover. So the net profit margin is equal to net income divided by sales and the total asset turnover, you should remember this, uh, this ratio, is sales divided by assets. So notice here again sales and sales cancel out so we are left with net income over assets as we see over here the financial leverage uh, ratio obviously stays the same. So you multiply these three and you will come back to net income over equity. Now this second level decomposition which breaks DuPont into net profit margin times asset turnover times financial leverage talks to us about how, mu how, um, how much net income is relative to sales. So you can think of this as uh, profitability. This refers to asset utilization or efficiency. How much sales are we generating from our assets? So these are the two ratios that are very business centric and we should focus on more. This ratio is simply saying how much leverage a company is using. So all else equal, if we have high return on equity because of these two ratios, that's good. If we have high return on equity because of this ratio, that means that we are taking on a fair amount of risk. And finally, we have the five level decomposition where the financial leverage and the asset turnover stays the same, but the net income over sales or net profit margin is further decomposed into three parts. So this is basically an analysis of the income statement. We can say that net income over sales is equal to our operating profit margin which would be EBIT divided by sales that's the operating profit margin multiplied by the effect of non-operating income which is earnings before tax divided by EBIT so notice that 
generally for manufacturing companies at least most of the non operating income refers to interest income but nevertheless ebt over ebit or earnings before tax divided by operating income gives us a sense for how much of our expenses are coming from non operating items if our if if our non operating expenses are very low then this ratio will be high on the other hand if our non operating expenses are high then this ratio would be low which reduces the return on equity the tax effect tells us what is the impact of taxes on our net income and this ratio is net income divided by earnings before tax so if the tax rate is very low then this ratio is going to be high and that will have a positive impact on the return on equity here again notice that uh, this whole uh, these the multiple of these three ratios simply cancels out to become net income over sales because ebit and ebit cancels out here ebt and ebt cancels out so we are left with net income over sales this is the most complex form of the dupont and i think the most likely questions that you will get are going to be on either the the, the first level or the second level now let's talk about pro forma analysis and pro forma financial statements and this ties to exhibit 8 in the 2011 curriculum pro forma financial statements or pro forma analysis here refers to creating financial statements uh, specifically the income statement and balance sheet in the future how do we do this the first and most important step is to forecast sales so if sales this year are 100 million you forecast what the sales are likely to be next year let's say you forecast 120 million and how do you do this forecast you can use several techniques and obviously you should do something that is relevant to your industry if your sales depend heavily on the economy and on say gdp growth rates then you estimate the gdp growth and determine your company sales based on that you can do a trend analysis you can do a regression analysis you can look at what your company is doing what products are going to be offered next year and what the projected sales are for your products you can look at competitor behavior so depending on your the specific situation of the company you are analyzing uh you can take all relevant factors and project sales the reason sales projection is so important because there are several items both on the balance sheet as well as the income statement that are driven by sales for example on the balance sheet your operating expenses will probably be related to sales on the so that's on the income statement on the balance sheet many items such as your current assets and property plant and equipment and so on will also be related to sales so you need to determine which are all the items on your income statement and balance sheet that are determined by sales and what and also the relative percentages so we will see this on the on the next slide in more detail you also then need to estimate uh, expenses that are not necessarily driven by sales so typically interest expense is determined by the amount of debt in your capital structure and the interest rate that is relevant for you the tax expense will be, will depend on the tax rate as well as your earnings before taxes so you need to estimate these and then based on all these numbers you need to create the future period income statement and balance sheet so let's look at a very very simple example say for company ift we have a uh, sales revenue so year zero actual numbers for sales are uh, 100 million the cost of goods sold is 50 and then your gross profit is 50 the sales general and administrative expenses 15 so your operating income is 35 let's say that the interest expense is 10 which means that our earnings before tax is 25 let's take taxes at uh, 40% so 
so 40 percent of 25 is uh, 10 and we then have net income of uh, 15 let's say that 10 uh, is given out as dividends so our retained earnings here are going to be 5 now in terms of uh, the year zero balance sheet let's say that current assets represent 50 percent of sales so we notice that the assets current assets are 50 property plant and equipment is let's say equal to 100 percent of sales so here in year zero total assets are 150 the liabilities are 25 long-term debt 85 common stock and paid in capital 35 for year one let's for year zero the retained earnings are five uh, which came from here and our total liabilities and equity is 150 now assume that this is the growing company so we are projecting a hundred percent growth so we project that in year one the total revenue is going to be 200 let's say that we assume that cost of goods sold is 50 percent of revenue so the cost of goods sold is 100 which means that our gross profit is 100 let's say that sg and a is 15 percent of sales so for year one that becomes 30 our operating income then is 70 interest expense notice remains 10 that's because we are assuming that the total debt stays the same so if the total debt is 85 and we are assuming the same debt same interest rate then the interest expense should not change so that remains 10 our earnings before tax then is 60 taxes which are 40 percent of 60 are 24 net income is 36 let's assume again that we are paying dividends equal to uh, two-thirds of net income so if we pay a dividend of 24 here our retained earnings will be projected retained earnings are 12 now what about the balance sheet if we assume that current assets are 50 percent of sales revenue so sales revenue is 200 50 percent of that is 100 we've assumed that property plant and equipment is 100 percent of sales revenue so that is 200 so our projected total assets are equal to 300 current liabilities let's say we assume these to be 25 percent of sales so 25 percent of sales sales are 200 25 percent of that is 50 let's say that we don't plan to change long-term debt so long-term debt remains the same at 85 uh, let's say that initially we are not projecting any uh, so let's say that initially we are projecting that common stock and paid in capital remains the same so this should actually be 35 so common stock and paid in capital is 35 the retained earnings from here get added so this 12 becomes 12 over here and the total liabilities plus equity then should be 182 which means that the funding deficit to get the funding deficit we compare the projected total assets with the total funding remember by funding we mean how much money is raised through liabilities and through equity so notice that our total funding liabilities plus equity is 182 which means that our deficit is 300 minus 82 which is 118 so because the projected assets are more than our funding we call this a funding deficit had our had our funding been greater than the total assets then we would have called this a funding surplus so when we see a situation like this this tells us that we need to do another iteration to come up with our pro forma statements in the next iteration we need to determine whether this company will either be uh, will either raise the funding through through equity or raise funding through debt and then we go through this exercise again.
at the comp and we keep iterating until the total assets is approximately equal to the total funding had we had if if you look at the example in the curriculum there they come up with a situation where there is a funding surplus and when there is a funding surplus that means we have more funds needed than the projected assets in which case a company can either retire debt or uh, or do a treasury stock operation and uh, give some money back to the shareholders but in any case whenever there is a funding surplus or deficit we need to keep iterating until the total funding approximately is equal to the total projected assets so that is it this was a relatively short reading other than the funding surplus and funding deficit at the end most of the material should be fairly familiar from before but still make sure that you practice hard do the questions in the curriculum as well as your study notes if you have any comments please post them on youtube if you like this video then click on the like button that is it for now if you found this clip interesting and informative please visit my website www.arifirfanullah.com here you will find a tremendous amount of useful material right here in the 2011 CFA video lecture series you will find the entire level 1 curriculum for free and most of the material here is still relevant so this is worth looking at the 2012 video lecture series covers both level 1 and level 2 these lectures are available for a fee and uh, finally down here uh, financial management at iba here you will find my lectures at iba uh, for a course on financial management plus you will find lots of useful spreadsheets that can help you with financial modeling so again please visit www.arifirfanullah.com thank you